Hi everybody, today I have a 3D Labs Oxygen VX1 car to play around with. This is a Glint R3, otherwise known as the Permedia 3. This is like a uh, 3D workstation card for CAD and 3D modeling sort of stuff, but it also can play some games, so I thought I'd take a look at it. I've never actually used one before, so... Uh, Take a look at uh, what kind of stuff it can run, whether it can run stuff right, what kind of visual problems it has, if it has any uh, freeze-up problems, anything like that. Just see what happens here. should be interesting. Let's take a look at its control panel first. There you go. So it's a 3D Labs Oxygen VX1 Glint R3 Revision 1. It has 32 megs of RAM. The driver that's on here is from 2001. I believe it's the newest driver available. <clears throat> There's not much to the control panel really. You just get some information. And on some, uh, there are some a few settings for OpenGL and DirectX, but not very many. You have uh, refresh rate selection and a gamma adjustment, and you can enable a taskbar config manager, which is down here. It's this thing, but I found that some of these don't work. Like uh, pop up the display panel is supposed to bring up the uh, control panel applet here, but uh, it doesn't. It only brings up display properties and this then and then display properties basically freezes in place and you have to wait about 30 seconds before it releases it and you can control windows again. It's very strange. I think maybe it's like uh it's not designed for Windows 98 second edition or something like that. I'm not sure. But you can uh select some things in here like resolution and pick from the the driver's limited selection of profiles for different games and software, which is also right here. You can pick from, it has a, it has these few games, few popular games, which is a pretty sad little list. And then you have um, some presets for generic <clears throat> DirectX 5 mode, which enables some uh, special uh, compatibility features like palletized textures, But that's what that does. It switches between some presets. You'd think they could just recognize the game executable instead of having the user go in here and try to figure out um, games. But And this is a driver from 2001, and it doesn't have... I don't think it's up to date. I don't think any of these games are from 2001. Or maybe from 2000. I don't know. Maybe... Maybe not, but uh, yeah, that's all that's here really, just a few checkboxes and you can adjust gamma for some, I don't know if it's for specifically for this application. I don't know if it recognizes the EXE or not that you're running. OpenGL is the same story, except it has even fewer things. It just has two games and then two pro software, a 3D Studio and Lightwave. And then there's a default setting, which whatever. And it only has, uh, you have a uh, wait for vblank, which I think is vsync, and some DMA subbuffers uh, quantity there, and gamma again. It's set on Quake 2 right now. We'll try Quake 2 and Quake 3 on the card and see how they work. Um, and then let's take a look at Everest here. This has some system info about the basic of the status and like some specs of the card it's running agp 1x on here for some reason i don't know if the card is a 1x card or i think it, it maybe it is but i tried uh, reinstalling chipset drivers and i tried changing some bio settings and uh, nothing changes that it's at agp 1x the card's pretty slow anyway, it probably doesn't really matter, and it has 32 megabyte of local memory, so that should be enough for any of the games that you play on this thing. It runs at 100 megahertz, which is pretty low for a 1999 card, really. 
and it only has one pixel pipeline with two TMUs, which is like a Voodoo 2. So its performance, its theoretical output is, about, is similar to a Voodoo 2 then, really. And the memory clock is synchronous with the core clock, which is interesting. It really doesn't have all that much memory bandwidth then. It's certainly less than what a Voodoo 2 has available. And we have uh, uh, the OpenGL information. It's 100% it's compliant with OpenGL 1.1. This system is an Athlon 1000 on a KX133 motherboard. which supports up to AGP4X. But not with this card. This card apparently is only going to run 1X. It has sideband addressing enabled. So yeah, we'll take a look at this and see what, how games run on it and see uh, what works and what doesn't. Okay, this is GL Quake all default settings, a fresh install of it, and it does not render much of anything on here. There's just, you have some water, and the bad guys, and the guns, but there is no environment. So, Quake, GL Quake appears to not work properly on here, which is pretty surprising for a card that's supposed to specialize in OpenGL. Okay, this is Deus Ex, and it runs okay. This is only at 640 by 480 though. And when you look in certain directions, it, the frame rate just ready. plummets. And it is extremely grainy at 16-bit color. This is Clive Barker's Undying, and it runs on here, and it appears to render everything, but it runs at about one frame per second most of the time. Okay, so this is Blood 2. Blood 2 does not run right on here. It has a... Uh, the game basically looks pauses like for a moment. And it, sometimes it runs smoothly. But then it... It jams up again. It goes from very smooth to, to not moving at all. System Shock 2 looks right but it seems to have some stutters every now and then so it's not really uh working super well but it it looks good Life Game of the Year Edition, OpenGL mode, 800 by 600. Good morning, and welcome to the Black Mesa Transit System. This automated train is provided for the security and convenience of the Black Mesa Research Facility personnel. The time is 8.47 a.m. Current topside temperature is 93 degrees, with an estimated high of 105.
the Black Mesa compound is maintained at a pleasant 68 degrees at all times. This train is inbound from level three dormitories to CDC test labs and control facilities. If your intended destination is a high security area beyond Sector C, you will need to return to the Central Transit Hub in Area 9 and board a high security train. If you have not yet submitted your identity to the retinal clearance system, you must report to Black Mesa personnel for processing before you will be permitted into the high security branch of the transit system. Of material routinely it's Quake 2 and it looks like it runs perfectly on the Media 3. The only, uh, the, main, the main quirk I see here, and it's the same across all the games, is the texture filtering is very strange on this card. It looks good up to like a, a certain distance and then it, as you can see on the ceiling here there is some kind of filtering problem where the texture is not it's a uh, very alias and dirty or noisy so there's something going on with the cards per pixel mit mapping We have Quake 3. This is uh, the normal preset at 800 by 600. This is, it runs all right. Actually, it runs pretty fast actually. But there is a, you can see more strangeness with the texture filtering. It's very noisy. I'm sure YouTube will blur it out <laughs> on you, unfortunately. Not only is it kind of noisy, but you can see there are poly some polygons are are uh, have a lower detail mitt map than other ones. So you have this right in front of me right now. There's a blurrier triangle than the rest of the floor. So it seems like the card, while doing per pixel mitt mapping for the most part, sometimes it's acting like a per polygon card. The fairly strange effect. But for the most part, the game looks correct. I don't see any obvious, any obvious problems. And we can switch it to 32-bit color. The card supports 32-bit color. But it's very, pretty slow. It's a major, there's a major frame rate hit. Which is typical for a card from 1999. You you wouldn't be playing Quake 3 at 32 bit color on uh, and this except for maybe the GeForce 2, 256. GeForce 256 is fast enough for 32 bit color at 800 by 600. And then we have Unreal Tournament. I switched the control panel to Unreal Tournament mode. This is 800 by 600 again. It doesn't look like it's running very smoothly. This is the direct 3D renderer.
All right, this is Sin. Sin is a Quake 2 based game. And it looks like it runs about as well as Quake 2. This is 800 by 600 and it's a default settings. There is one glitch I noticed with uh, the rendering on the card for Sin here. And this, it's this railing or something going on with the texture on it. Security door. Curious Quake 2 era shadowing. Yeah, in the texture filtering test, you could see that the uh, distant mip mapping is incorrect in some way, that, and it's causing all that uh, aliasing in games.
The fill rate looks right for a card at 100 megahertz with one pipeline, one pixel pipeline, and two TMUs. So it looks like it's fairly efficient when the game agrees with it. It's not causing some kind of stuttering. Okay, here we have Pretty Mark 2000. I've set it to 800 by 600 because 1024 by 768 is a bit much to ask of this card. You can see more of the strange behavior here with the polygons and the mitmaps snapping to polygons. It seems almost like the card is a, a, a per polygon mitmapper, but I don't know. It has it has it's a weird mixture of both. It seems like uh, per pixel and per polygon.
All right, so we ran the card through a, a whole bunch of games, some older and newer games, and we saw that some of them it runs all right, and some of them it doesn't run well at all. And there is uh, there are some graphical issues, mainly with uh, texture filtering, I think. Although obviously the extreme pausing is some kind of uh, hardware issue or driver issue as well that can't be ignored. We had GL Quake. GL Quake did not render correctly at all. Undying ran, ran, but it didn't uh, run well at all either. It was uh, one frame per second most of the time. Deus Ex ran all right, aside from terrible stuttering when you looked in certain directions. Quake 2 seemed to run perfectly. So that uh, they obviously put some effort into making sure Quake 2 worked well, and I noticed when I looked up reviews that Quake 2 was something that was tested by review sites like Anantec back then. Uh, Sin ran all right for the most part, aside from uh, the bug on the rendering of the handrails. Um, maybe that shows up elsewhere in the game too. But Sin is based on Quake 2, so it's not entirely surprising that it runs all right. Quake 3 ran all right for the most part as well, although the floor looked a little strange because of the texture filtering quirks. Blood 2 ran, but had, again, we ran into the apparently a direct 3D problem here where uh, it runs very, very sporadically slowly. We don't have speed, you'll have a normal speed, and then it pauses basically. System Shock 2 ran. Uh, among the Direct 3D games, ran pretty well actually, but it was uh, there were some stutters, but it ran smoothly for the most part. Half Life seemed all right too, but Half Life is uh, another OpenGL game that was popular at the time, so maybe they put some effort into making sure that worked okay. But uh, yeah, other than those games, uh, 3D Mark. The 3D marks ran okay too, and we saw uh, the texture filtering weirdness in 3D Mark 99. 3D Mark 2000 seemed okay as well. But overall, I don't think you'd want to have this for your retro rig. I'm sure it was a solid professional card at one point, although I have a feeling that Nvidia crushed them with the Quadro very quickly, because Quadro is based on the GeForce 256 or faster, and obviously that card is shockingly faster than this. So I think it had a very brief period of popularity. But anyway, this was an interesting look. I uh, thought it was um, interesting to test this card. I've never used one before, so it was neat to try it out and see what it took to get it up and running and find drivers and explore their little control panel. But uh, anyway, thanks for watching.